guys, it's Jimmy Warshawski, and this is Hacks. I just came to the fridge to get one of my favorite, favorite ingredients to work with, and that's why this episode is all about cheese. Now, as you already heard, today's episode is going to be all about cheese. Now, cheese is one of my all-time favorite ingredients to work with, but just by itself, cheese can get kind of boring. So, I like to use, I like to eat and make things that are with cheese, like ch grilled cheese and mac and cheese. So, this episode is going to be not just cheese, but all things cheese, focusing on cheese in general, grilled cheese, and mac and cheese. So in terms of the types of cheeses, there is so many, and I couldn't fit them all here because then you wouldn't be able to see me because I would be covered by cheeses because they would fill this house. But the general types, you've got your cheddars, your block and your grated. You've got Parmesan. Now this is great for shredding over stuff, very prominent in Italian cooking. You've also got some sliced pepper jack right here. Now this is really good on sandwiches, especially for like a little bit extra of a kick. And then you've got just some general grated cheeses. You know, you've got finer and a little bit more thick. And last but certainly not least, you've got a soft cheese, brie. Now this is really good for serving like an appetizer or if you're entertaining guests and you just wanna put out a little bit of a snack. All right, so now let's talk about cheese. Here's two tips to make your life easier and fresher. The first one is a cool way to keep your cheese much fresher in the fridge longer and preserve the flavors. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take a piece of wax paper and put your block of cheese right on that. Then fold it sort of like if you were wrapping a present. Then put a label on top and write it on. This part's optional, but it does help you remember what kind of cheese it is. The one I used was cheddar. Then flip it over, stick it in the fridge, and you've got some fresh cheese. All right, so this second cheese tip I have for you, you're gonna take your cheese grater, this is for grating cheese, so you're gonna take your grater or shredder, you're gonna lightly spray it with a little bit of cooking spray. Now take your block cheese out of your beautifully wrapped package, that will keep it fresh, remember that, what we just did? Take that. So now take your block of cheese and just shred it over. It should go much easier and it makes cleanup a lot easier too. All right, now second up on our list of cheese is one of my absolute favorites ever. This is something that I'll have for lunch or even dinner or maybe breakfast even. Yep, it's one of the simplest dish to make, but to get it perfect, it's so hard. Yep, you guessed it, we're gonna be talking about grilled cheese sandwich. All right, so a lot of you are probably wondering, Jimmy, what's the best bread? What's the best cheese to use for a grilled cheese? Well, the best bread would be either a sourdough, which I use, or a good hearty country loaf. Now, a good tip, if you have old frozen bread, this works great for grilled cheese sandwiches too. All right, now we're gonna talk about cheese. That's a little more of a difficult question. Now, you obviously wanna use a certain type of cheese. Now, I know there's those of you out there who are using those sliced plastic cheeses. Don't. Well, you wanna use a shredded cheese. This works great. Now, if you wanna go basic, you can do a blend of cheddar or jack or just cheddar or a mixed blend, anything that comes in those bags. Those work great, but if you wanna make it really fancy, I like to use a blend of Fontina, Gruyere, and mozzarella, 111, all shredded in a bowl, on the bread, in the frying pan, cooked to perfection. Oh my God, it's so good. Now, if you wanna make the most basic grilled cheese you can, take your bread, Take your cheese, just put it on top, then take your other slice of bread, and then put it in the pan with some butter, cook till golden brown on either side, flip it around, golden brown, put it on a plate, and then just cut and serve. That would be your most basic. But as you guys probably know in hacks, we don't do just basic. Now this first trick I have for making grilled cheese is instead of using butter as your fat, use mayonnaise. So what you're gonna do, just take a little bit of your mayo, Put it on a knife and just spread it across the bread. Just like that, see? Just a little bit of a spread. This is gonna act as your fat instead of the butter and it's gonna give it a little bit extra of a little spice and it's gonna make it really flavorful. All right, so now that you've got the first part covered, the bread, 
and we've got all of our shredded cheese in a bowl, here's a little tip to elevate that. You wanna season it with some salt and pepper and even some Dijon mustard or mustard powder. Powder. I know this sounds really weird, but it actually works and takes it to a whole nother level. All right, so now that you've got the key components of your grilled cheese sandwich done, it's time to layer and make it. All right, so you're gonna take your first piece of mayoed bread and put it mayo side down on a plate or napkin. Then you're gonna take your cheese and put it on top. Now, you wanna put a lot because it's kinda like spinach. You're gonna look like it's a lot, but then it's gonna really thin out. So you make, wanna make sure you really pile it on. Then you're gonna put your second piece of bread mayo side up, and then you've got your layered grilled cheese sandwich. So now that you've got your sandwich, you're gonna get your pan nice and hot. You really wanna get it really hot beforehand in about medium heat before you start cooking it. Because if you don't do this, then your mayo is just gonna not melt immediately and it's gonna make it really soggy and greasy and that's what you don't want. So you're gonna get your pan hot at about medium heat and then you're gonna take your sandwich and lay it down lightly on the pan. All right, so once you've done that, you're gonna wait till it's golden brown on one side, flip it over, wait till it's golden brown on that one, and then take it out. Now, now you've got a really good grilled cheese, but if you wanna take it to the next level, let's make it Frico. Now, Frico is kind of a way of saying an inside out grilled cheese, but not totally. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your pan and put a little bit of fat in it, like oil or butter or mayo. I use the oil because that's what I wanted to use. So then once that's down, and once that's nice and hot, you're gonna take some shredded Parmesan cheese and put it kind of in like a circle rectangle kind of thing and just put it down like right in the center of the oil. Now here's what's gonna happen. Your cheese is gonna melt. Then it's gonna start to bubble and then it's gonna crisp. Now you wanna put the sandwich straight in the middle down as soon as it's finished bubbling and just about to crisp. Not so it's totally crispy, but not so it's still melty. Right in between bubble and crisp. That's where you wanna hit your sandwich hard down. So you're gonna put it down and press hard on press hard on it with a spatula, that really big spatula that we were using before. So once that's really hard pressed, after about 10 seconds, you're gonna take it off, flip it around, and then you've got a really cool Frisco grilled cheese sandwich. So you wanna slice that up and serve it hot. Now, another option that you can do is make grilled cheese croutons. So just slice them really small, like they're about that big, that should work. So you're gonna slice it kind of like squares and then just put them on a plate and stick toothpicks in them and it's a really good appetizer or hors d'oeuvre or a snack for kids when they come home from school. And now if you really wanna make it awesome, stick them in some tomato soup. I mean, who doesn't love tomato soup and grilled cheese? That's really cool. Now, if you wanna make a lot of grilled cheese at once, just use the same recipe, but instead of doing it in a pan, put it on a large baking sheet. Then put them all down and put another baking sheet on top. Stick that in the oven in about 350, 375 and just keep checking it until it's golden brown on top. Now, those of you fans of packs know that one of my favorite kitchen appliances to use is the waffle iron. But you also know that I don't use it what the waffle iron is generally used for, like making waffles. But, so what I did here is I made a griddled grilled cheese. That's, say that 10 times fast. Griddled grilled cheese. Griddled grilled cheese. Whatever, you know I'm not gonna do it. So you're gonna take your grilled cheese like we prepared before, stick it in the waffle iron, and press the waffle iron down. Now don't like, don't squeeze it. You just wanna leave it kind of up so like it doesn't really break the cheese. Don't, don't break the bread. And then you're gonna take it out after about three to four minutes and it should be really good. Okay, so now it's time to move on to my second favorite cheese dish, mac and cheese. Now, there's tons of ways to elevate mac and cheese and there's a bunch of cool hacks. Uh, now, the best cheese for making mac and cheese is either cheddar or jack, but once again, you can be creative and use your favorite cheeses as long as they melt well. And for the best pasta, macaroni, you could go traditional by using elbow noodles, which is like the curly ones, or you could use penne, or my favorite, the shells because all the cheese kind of gets sucked in and when you bite into it, it's like biting into a cheese capsule. It's so good. Now, another hack for if you're making mac and cheese from scratch is to undercook the pasta, especially if you're gonna bake it. If you're gonna bake the mac and cheese, you wanna go al dente about two minutes or under what the package says about two minutes because the pasta is really gonna bake a lot more in the oven and you wanna make sure you don't overcook it so it's not rubbery and chewy. Also, if you're baking your mac and cheese, try sprinkling a little Parmesan or any other cheese on top. This will really give it a nice crispy crust. Now, no matter what kind of mac and cheese you're making, if you're making it from scratch or just using one of these quick pasta cups, no matter what you do, you can always elevate it. 
by using your favorite spices or ingredients like chipotle powder or bacon and jalapenos no matter what you do just be creative like the other night i made mac and cheese with broccoli and chicken and it came out so good so just really be creative in this and do whatever you feel right a lot of times when you go to restaurants you'll see things on the menu like fried mac and cheese now some of these things aren't just for really high-end fancy chefs Anyone can really make fried mac and cheese at home, and here's how. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your already pre-made mac and cheese and put it in kind of like a square-like container that at least has a square bottom. You're gonna stick that in the fridge and then take it out as soon as it's chilled. It probably should be about 30 to 30 minutes to an hour. As soon as it gets really like hard and chilled, you can even stick it in the freezer if you want to speed up that time. So then take that out and you're gonna lay out your breading station, which is gonna consist of flour, eggs, and breadcrumbs. I'm using panko breadcrumbs, so that's really what I like. Now, you really need the breadcrumbs on there, but if you don't put the eggs on, the breadcrumbs won't stick. And if you don't put the flour on, the eggs won't stick. So it's kind of like everything needs each other. So what you're gonna do, just take it, take your mac and cheese, pop it out of the container, then go flour, dredge it all around, eggs all around, and then panko, and make sure every little bit is covered with panko, or else it won't cook evenly. So then you're gonna get your oil nice and hot in a shallow pan, so really shallow, and then get it really hot. And then you're gonna just take your mac and take your fried mac and cheese and just drop it in really lightly so it doesn't splatter on you. Be careful about this. And you're just gonna cook it until it's golden brown on every side. Make sure you get every side of it. And then once that's out, you're gonna take it out, put it on a paper towel, and then wait, and then you're gonna put it on a plate, cut it up, present it however you like. I'm using a little um, hot mayo to dress mine up. And so that's how I do, and it really comes out really great. Last little tip, you guys know I gotta do this. You can take that same mixture, panko breaded, before you put it in the in the frying pan, and you can sit it, stick it in a waffle iron, and as always, it'll come out really good. So just try that out, maybe. Okay, well, thanks for watching, guys. Episode three of Hacks. Episode four will be coming really soon. If you have any suggestions of what it should be about, make sure to put them in the comments down below. I have been reading all of your comments from the previous episodes, and they are really good. Some of them like potatoes, sushi, bacon, and don't worry, they are coming soon. I just got a lot going on, but don't worry, I I will put them in an episode. Don't you guys just hold on. I will. All right, so make sure to like, follow, and subscribe at the underscore chef underscore Jimmy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for all the latest news on hacks. So without further ado, reprise the theme song and roll the end credits. I'm Jimmy Warshawski, and I'll see you next time on Hacks.